Hey, hello friends, this is Pastor Scott coming to you with the continuation of the Encore journey. So this week is a little bit of a transition week. We're just coming out of Easter and wonderful services, celebration that we had with Good Friday and Easter and celebrating our risen Lord. Uh, so in this week now, here's what's going on with the transition. We'll be very soon next week starting part three of the Encore journey called The Life We Live. In this in-between though, here's one of the things that I'll be working on is uh, connecting with people that visited Eagle Naz for Easter and inviting them to join life groups. These might be people that are brand new to our congregation or people that maybe just haven't joined a group and they want to join with us in this seven week journey uh, from April 7th until the end of the semester in May. But for those of you that are in groups, this is also a very important week as we get ready. So let me talk about where we're going. In the Encore journey, we're getting ready to start part three. So remember last fall, we did part one, the story we live in, where we reviewed the main narrative of scripture and really looked at, okay, salvation history and what has God done through Jesus Christ, through the gift of the Spirit, the development of the church, and what do we have to look forward to? That was part one. And then we did, uh, from January until just a couple weeks ago, uh, the beliefs that we share, looking at doctrine and theology through the lens of the Apostles' Creed and the scriptures that connect with the Apostles' Creed. So that's where we've been. Now, here's where we're going. We're going to be doing part three of the Encore journey called The Life We Live. So you think about that, that process. It's very intentional. The story we live in, looking at scripture. The beliefs that we share, looking at looking at theology, and now the life we live, looking at spiritual formation practices, very practical things that we are doing in our life. So we're very intentionally moving from head to heart to hands. And so in these next seven weeks between now and Memorial Day weekend and the end of the school year, we'll be looking at practices, things that we can incorporate in our life in your group, in your personal life, in your home life, ways that you can draw closer to the Lord. Now, we're going to be intentional about this in it's the springtime, it's post-Easter, we're thinking about new life. Even the creation around us in the springtime is there's new growth and there's things happening and that's what we're going to be inviting in our life new spiritual growth during this season. You think about even in the Easter story in John chapter 20 where Jesus has risen from the dead, Mary has gone to the tomb, and John tells us in his gospel that the tomb was in a garden. And in that garden is where Mary was looking and, and, and when Jesus comes up, he even mistakes, uh, she even mistakes Jesus for the gardener. What a great joke because he is the gardener, going all the way back to Genesis 1. But anyway, then Jesus speaks to her directly, Mary, and they embrace. And, and it's that beginning of what John is telling us of new creation. First creation that began in the garden and now new creation there. And here's the thing that I want us to kind of really meditate on. God is wanting to bring new creation into our life. In every season, we are believers that are under construction. God is always working on us, working in us in a new way. So I want you to think, even as you see the flowers and the trees and, and the buds of, of grass that are coming out, and yeah, even the weeds that are in our garden this time of year, God is also wanting to bring new life into our spiritual growth and into our life groups and things. So. It's God's invitation to create something new in you in this season. So here's what you're going to be doing in your group this week. I want you to take some time with the spiritual health inventory. I'm sure that looks familiar to you, at least I hope it does, because as a group, we did it in the fall and we did it in January, and I want you to do it again, but this time even with more intention. In fact, this session for this week is going to focus even more specifically, give a little more time to talking through this spiritual health, health inventory in your group. I want you to review it and really create some intentions and invite God to help you to grow in particular areas. Over the next 
seven weeks as we get into the life that we live. We're going to be looking at spiritual disciplines like uh, reading of Scripture and meditating on the Word, prayer, uh, the inner life of stillness and quietness and letting God work within us, working in our community through the sacraments, baptism and, and communion, these kinds of things, working through us into the world with social holiness and service to the people around us. So that's the direction that we're going to be going And I want you to think about this. Some of those things may come very natural to you. Some of those things might be a little bit of a challenge for you. Would you allow God to work in your life in ways that are maybe a little bit different? Maybe you've never done a spiritual journal before and you want to try journaling. I'd invite you to try that. Maybe you've never had a practice of regularly reading scripture or regularly praying. Maybe you've kind of fallen out of the habit of being involved at church and you need, to, you need to be maybe more regular in that kind of practice. So I want you to take that spiritual health inventory and in your group, I want you to go through it. Now, it's very intentional the way that I put this together. The top part talks about spiritual disciplines and habits. Now, the intention here is not in any way to be judgmental or for you to feel like, man, I'm just really blowing it here but rather just to identify what are some places in your life that you want to invite God to help you grow uh, more deeply, help you grow in that practice and bring it into your life. And I would invite you even talk with your spouse about it. Talk with your group about it. Be accountable to one another. In your group this week, even share with your group, I want to grow in this practice or this relationship. And then Keep tabs on each other week by week. This is one of the practices that John Wesley brought into his small groups when he started the small group movement in uh, in England in the 1700s, was that practice of accountability. Rather than just kind of thinking about practices, every week as the groups would get together, they would ask each other very direct questions. How are you doing? Where are you growing? What temptations are you facing? It got very real. We're going to bring some of those things into our group. Now, in the spiritual disciplines and habits, it's going to ask you questions about uh, time with Scripture, time with prayer, regularly meeting with other believers to hear the Word preached. So some are personal, some are corporate, some are things you do with other believers having times of fellowship and connection with believers. It also gets into some of those very personal habits. So for example, maybe you have a drive time in the morning, going to work or bringing the kids to school. Is that a time where you're playing Christian music or playing a podcast? And I invite you even in thinking that of how can you bring that even more into your family life? Could it be that uh, as a family you decide, hey, let's pick a podcast we want to listen to for a couple weeks. Let's pick uh, some Christian music. Let's make a Spotify playlist of our favorite Christian music. Invite your kids to get involved. Invite your teenagers to get involved. That's a great way of making this a corporate kind of practice. It also asks you questions about, are you praying for unbelievers? Are you looking for opportunities to share? Are you serving your church, serving your community? Are you giving financially? Maybe the practice of tithing is something that would be new for you over the next couple of weeks. And then I want you to think about some practices that you can do, journaling or fasting. Um, Our son Joel, who's doing a mission trip, actually just this week finished a seven-day fast that he did, uh, which is pretty amazing. But in that time, God brought him some incredible spiritual insights, and he grew very very rapidly in, 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 in depth with the Lord. So that top part, I want you to think over the next seven weeks between now and the end of the school year, What are some disciplines and habits that you're ready to dig into? Um, Pick a couple of those that you want to focus on and share it with your group. Be accountable to them. Do it in your group this week. What are some things? Now, at the bottom, we're not just looking at disciplines and habits of reading Scripture, but also your relationships. Part of holiness means that not only in my right relationship with God, I'm in right relationship with the other people around me. So here's where you have an opportunity to think about your marriage, your relationship with your kids, and yeah, even your relationship with your parents. Even if you're an adult, the very first question there is, my relationship with my parents is in order. 
Guess what? The commandment to honor your father and mother doesn't end when we're 18. So maybe this is time in the next couple of weeks for you to think about how can you make that relationship with your parents better? How can you make that relationship with your spouse even better? Are you regularly spending time in prayer together, reading scripture together? I want you to challenge yourself in this and share that with your spouse and spur one another on to love and to good need, good deeds. My relationship with my children are life-giving and healthy. What are some ways that you can bring that in? My relationship with other believers are healthy without bitterness or anger. When we lived in Israel, I thought this was very interesting. During the season of Yom Kippur, there would be the Yom Kippur service at the synagogue would be a time where people would come and they would pray and ask for forgiveness of God for their sins. But knowing that the 10 days before that, they had to go and make things right between themselves and other people. If they needed to ask for forgiveness, they had to do it. If they needed to extend forgiveness, I wish we had something like that in the Christian church. Wouldn't that be awesome if you knew that, hey, before you get to the, the Easter service and you celebrate God's forgiveness, you've got to go and make things right between yourself and other people. That's actually listed on there. Do you, are your relationships with other believers in order? And then thinking about my relationships at work or at school, um, thinking about anxiety or discouragement, are those things maybe you need to focus on in the next couple of weeks? Are you aware of experiencing the joy of the Lord and His presence? So, in your group this week, spend some time together going through those things. I want you to score yourself, again, not in a judgmental way, but as a way of identifying, here's some areas of my life that I feel like I'm doing well. I'm in pretty strong relationship with God. But what are some areas where you feel like, all right, I need to be challenged. I need to grow in these areas. I need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in a deeper way in my life. Here's the cool thing. I hope that when we get to that end, at, at the end of the school year, Memorial Day weekend, we can kind of look at these things and say, wow, I've grown. I've gotten stronger in these disciplines. My relationships are better than they were. I'm seeing God work in my life in a new way. In the same way that we celebrate the goodness of God in Easter, in the same way that we see creation around us with new life, let's invite new spiritual life, new growth in ourselves. Now, next week when we get back together with our groups, it will be the intro week and we'll be diving into the life that we live, spiritual formation practices for everyday living as believers. But spend this week with your group, with yourself, with your family, asking God to put His finger on those places in your life that you want to grow. Now, I'd encourage you, don't pick 15 things, right? Just focus on two or three. Let's make this, let's make this very realistic. What's two or three things in the next seven weeks that you want to invite God to do a deep work in your life? All right, there's your assignment. So in your group, talk it over, identify some things, Share it with your group, and let's get going on the life that we live and allow God to grow new things in us. God be with you.